So today marks the return of the May Marine Madness series, which I had started roughly about two years ago. And I am going to be taking this month to take a look at various natural horror, eco-horror films uh, featuring uh, water living creatures. So not necessarily fish, some possibly maybe mammals. I actually wanted to change it up the second time out and take a look at Parasites. I wanted to actually start with a film featuring uh, Simothoa exeguae, which um, I also believe is known as the fish tongue eating louse. So this creature is somewhat of a uh, parasitic isopod. Uh, it does attach to the tongue. It drains the blood until the tongue pretty much atrophies, falls off, and then the creature attaches itself to the remaining muscles in the tongue stub, uh, which pretty much just fashions itself as a replacement tongue for the fish. This creature pretty much either feeds off of the blood from its host or from its mucous membrane, I suppose, and to some degree it is also um, able to change its gender. If too many creatures um, within the same area happen to be the same gender, uh, very much like frogs, it can change its gender to, to female. It's definitely a very interesting creature. To my knowledge, not really too much information is um, out about this creature, but also just due to current pop culture, there's somewhat of a pillow pet craze, so you can actually buy your own isopod uh, parasite and just cuddle up with at night. <laughs> So um, many of you who are already familiar with this creature already realize I'm talking about the 2012 film The Bay, which was directed by Barry Livingston and was released by Lionsgate uh, Roadside Attractions. I'm generally not a fan of the um, found footage genre, but I definitely appreciate the way this film was done. It's a, a very interesting take. The film was done in a very docu-style type fashion. We follow a young reporter who is documenting the events of a 4th of July celebration and we kind of pick up events from what she is reporting on. In post, I suppose, she's also doing somewhat of a uh, video interview and there's also recovered footage from throughout the day. So we not only see what she's seen and reporting on, we're also learning events from uh, some oceanographers who had also come into contact with high levels of toxicity in the water. They tried reporting this to the mayor and they were pretty much just brushed off and I'm assuming this was done because he was just wanting to save face. Obviously the water was not as pure and filtered as it should have been and in this aspect the film has just a very a chud like quality. Um, the fact that all of this toxic waste is being dumped into the bay basically just um, waste which is being excreted from chickens which are being pumped full of uh, hormones uh, so that they could grow larger or grow more quickly. So obviously we wind up with mutant isopods which <laughs> infiltrate the town water supply and eventually take on uh, humans as their their hosts. The film to some degree also seems to be a very realistic depiction on how bureaucratic BS just tends to bury people in the paperwork or procedure, maybe not necessarily by uh, intent, but just the design of how the system works. It's just very easy for, um, especially the characters in this in this film, it's very easy for them to have just fallen between the cracks and have been brushed aside. So numerous reports have been made, not only by the reporter who has been documenting the events, the town has basically been shut down, they have pretty much been quarantined, and the oceanographers who have been trying to submit their, their information have also been ignored. There's a local doctor who has also been trying to uh, get in contact to report the outbreak and he eventually also just gets ignored and told to abandon the hospital and just leave everyone behind. It's definitely a very interesting film in the fact of the whole eco-horror uh, presentation aspect of it. It's definitely a social commentary not only on government but I, I take it as a way in which people should not allow themselves to be silenced. Anything that is being prevented from being known, knowledge that is being hidden, is definitely something that should be known, uh, should be documented and shared. So definitely for those who are willing to look deeper into the film and gain more knowledge on this, or for those viewers who are willing to look deeper into the film, you definitely can pick up a lot more uh, social commentary as well as just 
I, I guess you could say government criticism to some degree. Definitely a very well done film. Um, you do have this documentation style of it, but you learn about the characters as you progress. You learn more about the plague which has been occurring. You definitely have some character development as well, but the film doesn't really have this whole voyeuristic approach to it. It's, it's um, like I said, there's a lot of character development. You progress through the film and you learn as the characters learn. And I would say it's definitely a very great watch. Um, I would definitely recommend it to those who haven't seen it. Um, but that concludes this first segment of the May Marine Madness, and I will talk to you guys later.